We are in Windows Server 2016. Let's see how we can add a DHCP server to automatically hand out IP addresses. First, we'll go to the Server Manager, which you see right here, and we'll go to the Add Roles and Features. From here, we'll go ahead and click Next, and we'll continue clicking Next until we get to the server roles. Now, let's go ahead and check the box for DHCP Server, and add the features, and click Next. We'll go ahead and skip through to the end, and choose Install. And this usually takes a few minutes, and then we'll get to the configuration portion. Our installation is now complete, and we can click on the click, or we can click on the complete DHCP configuration here, or we can just click close, and then click on the triangle at the top and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and click on that, and we'll go through another wizard. So let's go ahead and click next, and it's going to use specific credentials, either your administrator for your domain or you can choose other information. You can also skip AD authorization as well. Let's go ahead and choose the domain administrator, click Commit, and click Close. Now we'll go to the Tools menu at the top, and we'll choose DHCP. Let's go ahead and expand the manager there. Move that off to the right so we can see what we're doing. And we want to create an IPv4 scope. However, you can create an IPv6 if you want, but in this video we're going to cover the IPv4. So right now our options, our policies, everything is blank. Let's go ahead and click on IPv4, right-click on it, and choose to create a new scope. This is going to automatically hand out IP addresses to computers that don't have a static IP, which is the default when you first boot up a computer. Let's go ahead and choose Next. And you can call the scope anything you want. I'll just go ahead and call it internal for our internal organization. Click Next. Now you can put in your starting IP address. Make sure you don't have any static IP addresses in the start or end IP. Now, if you have no choice, then I'll show you how to exclude any specific IPs for printers or other devices that may have a static IP in your pool. So let's go ahead and use the same subnet that we're on. If you're not sure what that is, you can go down and go to a command prompt, and you can type IP config, and it tells us that our subnet is 192.168.15. We can see the subnet mask there, which tells us that uh, that's the subnet itself. So let's go ahead and choose 192.168.15, and we'll go ahead and choose the last IP address after our first one. Let's choose 100 to 200. So we can use anywhere from 1 through 254, but I know that there's no static IPs in between those two numbers. Our length is set to 24, which is a subnet mask of 2553 times dot zero. So that just uh, means that you've got 8 plus 8 plus 8. So 2 to the 8th power equals 256, and you always have to include the number 0. So that's how you get 255 as the last number. All right, so now we'll go ahead and click Next, and we'll see Exclusion Options. So if you have a server, say, at the 105 address, you can exclude it. So we'll put in 192.168.15.105, and we'll say the ending address is also 105 because we just have the one server. If you have more, you can just keep on adding more. Let's go ahead and click Next. Our lease duration is set to eight days. It's kind of a long time. I like to change that to one, but that is the default is eight. Click Next. And we can also choose to configure additional scope options. I definitely recommend that, and you'll see why here in a second. So we want to have the router or default gateway. And if you're not sure what that is, once again, we can choose our default gateway information and we see it's 192.168.15.1. So let's go ahead and put that in, 192.168.15.1. And that's how we get out to the internet. In this case, it's our Comcast router, for instance. Go ahead and click Next. And now we have our domain name. Well, we know that our domain name is widget.internal, so it automatically filled that in, and it went ahead and put in one of the IP addresses of our domain controllers. So that's fine, that's perfect, let's go ahead and choose Next. 
Uh, we don't have any wind servers. It's a little old fashioned, so we won't get too much into that. Let's go ahead and click next. And we're going to activate the scope. Let's go ahead and click next and finish. Let's click on our scope, click on our pool, and we see our pool starts at 100, ends at 200, and we see our address exclusion for our static IP is at 105. And if we go down to our scope options, we can see our router that we set at 15.1. We can see our DNS servers, which is our domain controller at 239, and the DNS domain name. And that's really all you need. You don't need to do anything else beyond that. Uh, if you want to see if there are any address leases, which we don't currently have, no one's connected to our server yet. Otherwise, we would see some leases show up there. If we decide we no longer want to have our scope, we can right click on it and we can choose to delete it. We can choose to stop the scope. Let's go ahead and right click on the scope itself there. And we can choose, there's our delete. We could also deactivate, which would leave the scope there, but it would just make it so it doesn't work. So that's how you create a basic DHCP dynamic host control protocol scope in Windows Server 2016.